I done messed around and went viral right from my driver's seat Just like what the industry was containing I'd rather make a difference instead of hating and complaining So let me park the whip, it don't matter, rapper or model chick Seeger or comedian, perfect, let's park in politics Hey, let's park in politics hey, Welcome to the pullover, let's park in politics hey, this the pullover, let's park in politics. I say this the pullover, let's park in politics. Back again. That's how I do it. Back again. Welcome back to the Lockout Man Podcast Show, everybody. That's what I'm doing. Knocking it out for you guys on a Saturday. That's what we do. Well, again, welcome to the Lockout Man Podcast Show. I am your host, Lockout Men, and this is where we park in politics with all our guests. And in today's guest, it is Black Girl Rave. <laughs> so look at here. I appreciate you coming on because you know we we we've been we we've been going back and forth. I, I actually found you on uh on Instagram. Uh, you did, uh, you, I found you on Instagram first and then I clicked on your, uh, your YouTube channel mm -hmm. and you did a review for 18, 18 will in the yeah. pair. Uh, yeah. you are, you, you know, you, you are, you now let's, let's get it clear. You are a truck driver. How long you been driving trucks? Um, Almost two years now. I'm about a couple months off of my two year mark. All right, all right. So you you are a truck driver, but you you from what I have seen on your YouTube, you are a strong proponent of black business. Absolutely, always. That's um, like the first step into building black wealth is to support black businesses because we've always been left out when it comes to building wealth and having businesses. So to have that inclusion, I feel like we all need to spread the word on having more support for black businesses. We need more generational wealth in our community. So definitely now, have that up at the front. Yeah. Now I, I am, I am, I am 100% uh, for that, but some black businesses you just can't support. I mean, like, I mean, like if you go into if, if you go into a, a black owned restaurant mm -hmm. and you know you you encounter the 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 counter person and they give you they give you so much attitude. How do you how how do you support that business if they if 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 they give you that if they give you that bad service, that bad attitude, that that just you know that just blow your mind like yo i, I want to support you but i just can't right so that's about your own transgressions just like there's other ethnicities that have also given bad services we can do that as well so basically you you kind of limit yourself to supporting more black owned businesses and then you specify which ones you know have good service which ones are actually making an effort to include their customers and make them feel special now I do know this within the black community, we're much more harsher on each other than other businesses. So we also have to take that into account as well, because hold, Walmart. Hold let me let me ask you this. Why yes. is why is that? Why? Why are why are we why are we such harsh, harsher on on our on our own people as far as being a business? Because it's like when a person. It's like when a person opens up a black a, a black owned business, open up a store. Right. But then there's there's a foreign store just down the street. They and the and 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 the you know in the black community don't want to support the black owned business because they feel that they, they could get a deal or whatever, whatever from the foreign store. Why is that? Yeah, so that's gonna take me on a tangent, but just to make it really simple, it is from our own mistakes, from you know, how we treat each other, but how we treat each other is based off of years and years of systematic training for mm. us to be pitted against each other. But that's a whole mm. nother conversation. <laughs> mm. You said a whole nother conversation. Right? 
Because I, I mean, I, I don't understand it. I, you know, I've been a black owned business, a uh, successful business owner. I had two uh, successful stores in the Cleveland area uh, years ago, but unfortunate, uh, unfortunately, I was next door to a foreign, uh, you know, a foreign store, corner store. Mm -hmm. And, you know, my business was the one that got broken into, you know, their business wasn't even touch mine was you know i you know i was in the neighborhood i got i gave great service you know i you know did a little bit of you know deals with a few people you know i i gave stuff away but my my store was the one that was that was broken into and it was ransack but the 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 business that was next door the foreign guy his store wasn't even touched yeah, see, that's the kind of issues that we face and we need to understand why that is happening and just bringing attention to it in general will start the conversation for us to figure out what's going on, because there's so many different reasons for something like that to happen. And I'm so sorry that happened to you, but Thanks. a whole long conversation. <laughs> <laughs> Black girl rave. This is a uh, life before trucking, man. So what you was doing before you got into the trucking industry? Being a hot mess, being a young <laughs> girl out of college, making mistakes. But uh, career-wise, I was in insurance. So I was like at a call center doing and being an insurance agent. I was also at another call center, uh, basically transcripting calls for the deaf and the hard of hearing and just kind of doing little jobs like that. Just trying to figure out my place in life and what I really want to do. So being being in a being in a call center, uh, how long how long you was there? At the call centers, um, about a year, two years, because there were two different ones. So two years all together. And you also uh, you also went to college. Did you did you did you graduate or you you just came out? Hell no, <laughs> <laughs> I did not graduate. College is not for everybody, and I'm one of those people. But I've been to several different colleges definitely got the full experience but i would just education in general being on in that strict educational just it's just not for me <laughs> just right. not for me i like to be educated in what i want to educate myself on and i was in college changing my major a whole bunch of times just all over the place i said let me leave and figure out what i want to do instead of being here and just wasting money you know exactly exactly mm -hmm. so what about so what so what about other things in life uh i mean you know you only been in a you only been in the game for two years but how, how old are you see i'm only 22 so there's not much <laughs> uh, there there's not much there, there. Not i graduated much. high school went around became a truck driver you know so there's not much to really speak about all right so 22 years old man I, you know you you awfully young man I, why why did you seek a job in trucking I'm just kind of that person. Um, basically, I met someone that was a truck driver and they're like, you can do this. And I said, you know, what? why not? Let me take that leap of faith. And I'm also that kind of person where it's like, if a lot of people think that I can't, oh, no, I definitely want to do it. And it was kind of more like an on the limb thing. I just left my, my job and I was like, let's see how this goes. And then I ended up falling in love with it. And that's where I've been ever since. All right. So what so what you 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 went to school? Or you went to a you went to a company to get your license? Yeah, I went to a school that had um, kind of like the contract with the company, but I didn't stay at that company. <laughs> okay, okay. So what school? What 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 school you go? What school you went to? Yes, I went to Career Tech out of Lakeland, Florida, and at that time I lived in Orlando, so it was easy to get there. Okay, okay. What was like? Well, you you're a Florida girl. You still there? You you still in Florida? My family's still here, so I have to come down here and see my family. But you know, I'm over the road truck driver, so I'm just all over the place all the time. <laughs> yeah, but what? The, the, yeah, but the, the the address is in Florida, though. Yes, it is now. Oh, okay, 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 okay. So what was? So let's go back a little bit. What was life like growing up in Florida? Now I talked. <laughs> I talked to. Uh, I talked to pa uh, Pam Mula. Oh, I love her. So much. She's from Florida as well. She says uh, Florida is not all that cut up to be. So what was Florida like for you? Yeah, so I was actually um, born in Germany, raised in Maryland. And then a little bit later in my teen years, I moved to Florida and I was in Florida. So technically, wait, wait, I wait, can't. Wait, wait, wait. <laughs> I'm a military brat, army brat. Wait, wait, wait. wait. Germany? 
Mm-hmm. How long you was how long you was in Germany for? Not not long. Not long. Uh, oh, it's a couple okay. years. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Continue. Continue. But you see, like, you know, I was traveling all over the place. So I would say when I was 15-ish, that's when I moved to Florida. So it was about 15 to 19 I experienced Florida. And like she said, it's not all that cut up to be. It's it depends on the area that you're in because Florida is a whole state and you can't judge it by the whole state, but it's very beautiful. It's very warm. Like when the rest of the country is going through weather, Florida is untouched. So it's definitely like a good retirement place for a lot of people because they don't want to be bothered with all the stuff going on with the weather. It's warm and it's beautiful, but Florida has its issues just like any other place. I got you. I got you. Some people want to blow Florida off the map. I'm just saying. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just saying. Some people want to just uh uh just so so you went to so you went to the school, you got your you got your license. Uh what was what was the first company you went with and why? Yeah, so the first company I went with was May Trucking. And that's because mm-hmm. they were doing a flat rate. So knowing that I was just getting into trucking, I was just getting my groove and I was I knew I was going to make rookie mistakes and have issues. I didn't want my pay to be all over the place because I was going through whatever I was going through trying to learn. So that flat rate. And then they're also hiring new drivers and read enough reviews. And I said, let me just go over there and see how it goes. So May Trucking. So May Trucking, May Trucking was the first. How, how was it when how, how was it when you got with your trainer at May Trucking? So I was so, so blessed. My The friend that actually introduced me to trucking was also at May. So he trained me. So I didn't have to go with some random person, with lady or man. It was so convenient. I'm so blessed to have had that experience. I didn't have to go with some stranger. So I actually trained with a friend and I was on that truck for a minute with him, a little bit over a month. And he wasn't the best at teaching, but it was more comfortable because I knew him. So was now let me ask you this. Now, being that you knew him and you guys was friends uh, and you just mentioned that he wasn't the best at, at at training. But was that because of the friendship that y'all two have with each other? No, he was just bad. <laughs> he just wasn't the best teacher like most of. I, what I learned how to back and how to maneuver was really from me being out on my own. That's why I always tell women that ask me about trucking and, you know, they're scared to go on their own. I tell them, honestly, you will learn the most by yourself because you have to figure it out. You know, you take your time, you, you slow and you're careful when you're by yourself, you figure out so much more, so much more faster because you're not dependent upon that other person in there. All right. So you, uh, so how long you was with May trucking before you left? About five five months, mm. I believe. What was what, what was the reason? Now let me ask you this: What was the reason why you left, and why you, and what was and what was some of the key points that you was looking for in a new trucking company? Absolutely. So May Trucking at that time, I was staying out for about six weeks at a time over the road, and I was losing my mind. <laughs> I know that they only require you to stay out for four weeks at a time, but you know, I just stayed off for six weeks, but I really wanted a company where I could go home more often. Mind you, I was also still what 21. So I'm still trying to get my life together and all that. And I just didn't want to be out on the road that long. So that was the main, main, main reason. And then also too much of the out West, out in the middle of nowhere. I was always out in the middle of nothing, 2000 miles away from home. So that's when I looked into total transportation because they were offering uh home time every two weeks in florida okay now being that florida it's kind of hard to get a a lot of trucking companies don't like hiring out of florida for you know for several reasons number one there's not that much freight that's coming out of florida sometimes you got to at least deadhead to like georgia somewhere Mm -hmm. to to get you know to get uh to get loaded out but um but you you know, stay, you know, you by you staying in Florida and, and you say you went with total transportation. But what other companies that you that you seeked out that didn't give you a chance out of Florida? If any. so many, so many, especially when the pandemic first hit, I was going to another company. So I was looking for a company to go to. 
when the pandemic hit, oh my goodness, nobody wanted to hire out of Florida. They they would immediately tell me we're not hiring out of Florida at all. And this and sometimes it would be company that actually did hire out of Florida before, but because the pandemic was already just stressing, uh, freight and everything so much more, I had so many no's around that time because of me being out of Florida. And that's when I kind of legally changed everything over to Texas. So okay. right around that pandemic time, I was actually legally kind of registered in Texas. And then just recently I moved back to Florida. Okay. Okay. But you still got your Texas address though. No, not anymore. I just just cut everything off. Like just recently, cut it all off. What was uh What was life like down in Texas? Because that's a far cry than than Florida. <laughs> and see, that's the kind of person I'm. In, I am. I'll just okay. Get up and see what happens. <laughs> I'll just move somewhere. That's I like to. I'm sporadic. I'm an Aries. I'm fire. I will just get up and make a change. I'm not scared of much. You know, I don't mind change. So. I asked a lot of people who are from Texas and specifically Dallas, what's it like? They were like, come on. <laughs> and I came on. <laughs> All right. Dallas was nice. It was, I didn't spend too much time exploring Dallas. Honestly, I was usually driving or when I was home, I was just trying to get some things done and go right back over the road. But I mean, it's a beautiful city. It has a lot of opportunities. It's very well diverse. It's hot as hell, but <laughs> It's it's not it's a big change from Florida, but you know it's just like any big big city, you know. Did you uh did you did you did you partake in some of the Texas screw music down there? I got to shout out Texas. It's not that's you know I I fuck with Texas. <laughs> I mess with Texas, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. That's Texas. Shout out to uh OG Ryan C, Ryan, uh, you know, Slim Thug and uh and the and the rest of the uh screwed up click down there. Um being that how long you stayed down in Texas before you moved back to Florida? Five, six-ish months. Damn, that was a short run. <laughs> Man, okay. but like forever. But you, but you, but you only did that so you can, so you can have more opportunities in the trucking industry, though. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. So tell me what what motivates you? Uh, what most what motivates you about you know you know being a female truck driver, and also what what also frustrates you about the industry? Okay, so much motivating me is the fact that. What motivates me the most is really kind of my YouTube and my Instagram. People messaging me and telling me, oh, my goodness, you inspired me to do this. You inspired me to do that. You give me joy. You give me light in my day. That, I mean, that'll keep me going just that alone. Like, actually seeing that people are actually taking what I'm saying and what I give them and actually making changes in their lives or just simply giving somebody a smile or a laugh for the day that like makes my whole day when I get those kind of messages or, you know, helping people and directing them. Because I know when I became a truck driver, I didn't see many women that looked like me, not as young as me, you know, not my skin color and, you know, not just not like me. I saw in general, some, you know, younger black women, but it was minuscule, like so, so scarred. So, if I can be a motivation to somebody, I want to be. And trucking isn't for everybody. I never want to tell people, just come on, you can do it. But if it's somebody that actually thinks they can do it, it makes it so much easier when it's like, oh, she looks like me. She she doing it. I can do it. And then when it comes to frustrations, woo, trucking, trucking is different from a woman's point of view than a man's, number one. Also from a younger person's point of view than someone older that has more experience for obvious reasons in that in that way. But just to be more specific, I've had situations where I was working at a company with uh, another man that I knew personally, and we would tell that company the same exact thing. And the response would be two entirely different responses. They wow. came from a place of much more respect with him and much more, we don't really care what you want on my end. And I'm a great mm -hmm. driver. I get my job done. I do what I need to do. So it wasn't anything in that way. It's just, you can kind of tell I'm young, I'm female, I'm, you know, I'm out here doing it by myself and people think they can, you know, just, they can just kind of speak to you anyway or not actually take your, your issues seriously. So that's a big frustration for me.
tell me about tell me about a time when you you had that issue with with a shipper or a receiver. Um, with a shipper or a receiver, not that much. Just the other day, <laughs> I came early for my appointment and I got fussed at for coming early. Sorry, but. I actually, when it comes to being on the road, I don't have that many issues when it comes to disrespect, sexism, and racism. I have little things here and there, but I usually stay out the way. And a lot of other female trucks will say this. We kind of stay in our trucks. We kind of stay out the way. So I don't really put myself in positions to be disrespected, and I don't allow that disrespect. But most of, you know, any of those issues, it comes from corporate, comes from up ahead, speaking mm -hmm. to a, a manager or your owner or whoever, that's where the issues a lot. But when it comes to physically being out here on the road, I actually don't run into too, too many problems. Not in that way. Mm. What will be, what, you know, now that you mentioned that, uh, describe like, you know, I'm not sure if you, you know, probably want, you, you probably might not want to talk harsh about your current company. And that's, un, that's very understandable because we don't want to, we, we don't want to, you know, step on people's feet or anything like that. But, Describe uh, describe a time that you know that that you had a hard time with a with a previous dispatcher. What what was what was what was that like? Okay, can you repeat that one more time? I'm kind of losing connection. All right, can you hear me? Check one two. Check. It's Check. breaking up kind of bad. I'm so sorry. <laughs> uh, is it is it is hold on? Uh, is it breaking up on my end? Yes, you're in, but you're good now. Came back. Oh, okay, okay, okay. So tell me, you know, now you mentioned, you know, you mentioned the dispatcher and everything, but tell me, you know, tell me about the time that you had an issue with uh with your past dispatcher. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. I got that. I, I got that. Woo! Uh, I got that part. Honestly, it's general issues that anybody black, white, old, blue, brown, whatever that will face is dispatchers trying to force you to go somewhere you don't want to go, trying to force you to drive in unsafe conditions, trying to, or getting you late for home time, all the super general trucking issues. I've never, never had a dispatcher, you know, ever come at me crazy. Number one, because I don't put myself in a position for them to even give me that energy, but it, it dispatchers, they kind of know their place. They kind of know they work for you and mostly in general, but, it's just the super general trucking issues that anybody of any flavor would go through at all. Just, you know, them, oh, it's snowing over here. It's ice. I don't feel driving them. Well, you can make it. No, I just told you I'm not going to go. Or are you telling them, don't send me over here. And they send you over there. Or I have home time. And they get you home extremely late. Just general, general stuff like that. But I've never had. I've never been on phone cussing with a dispatcher or having any crazy issues like that. How was how was uh tell me about uh tell me about tell me about a time when you did have an issue with a dispatcher that probably couldn't get you home. You know, you probably say, Hey, you know, I need to get home or whatever the case may be, and it just didn't work out because he didn't put the effort in. Okay, now I'll go ahead and call this company out. JCT. Oh, mm. my goodness. And you can ask a lot of JCT drivers, JCT drivers that I spoke to as well. They all have this issue. JCT, I don't know what they had going on with that home time, but I was either never home on time or they would purposely kind of route you out the way. And then by the time the home time came around, they'd be like, sorry, we missed your home time. Do you just want to skip it? Because we have all these loads available. Like, are you crazy? <laughs> <laughs> That's one of the companies I had to biggest issue with home time it was ridiculous it would i mean like they they were just outlandish with it they would really sit here and in, in your face and be like do you want to skip your home time i've been out on this road for four weeks so why in the heck would i want to skip my home time because you guys are playing these games that's a definitely specific issue i can call out and that's just one <laughs> uh, you say that's just one now you mentioned you now you mentioned to me you know within this in in this two-year game that you've been into and you've been uh you know, you've been trucking out here. You said you touched on leasing. How how was how was that experience for you? Yeah, so leasing is a it's good and it's bad. Now, this is the first thing I want to say with and leasing as in lease purchase. Let's be specific about that. I would never, ever, ever recommend somebody do a lease purchase with the goal of actually getting that title for that truck. Never. Okay. Okay. First, first and foremost, 
what they charge for the trucks are crazy. Like the truck may be fifty thousand dollars, but they're gonna get about ninety thousand dollars out of you by the time that lease is up. And then I've had I've heard so many horror stories of people that stayed at a company for a leash purchase purchase for that whole period of time, three years, four years. And then all of a sudden it was something at the end where they couldn't get that truck. So I would never, ever recommend that to somebody. But if it's something where somebody's trying to make a more, a large amount of money faster for a specific goal, go, go for it. So leasing is lease purchase specifically with me. I, it was more just like I said, trying to make some more money quickly for a specific goal but oh you get a lot of issues with getting crap equipment and stuff like that and because it's not an actual ownership of the truck you still have to abide by so many more rules and constrictions that you would not have to abide by if you actually had your own real equipment it's like you like a company driver with more responsibilities you know it's not i don't really consider that as an owner owner operator Okay, that's what's up. That's what's up. So you uh so how long have you did how long have you done leasing before you decided not to go with it no more? About six months total. All right. So within that within that six months, uh walk me through how you got everything together to set up your lease. Um, so in general, I mean, like I said, you like a company driver with more responsibility. So the company is gonna set you up. You don't really have to do much. You use their fuel card, you use, you know, their their equipment. And basically, all you have to worry about is fuel and maintenance and things such like such as that. But like I said, the company is going to make sure everything gets done in general. You kind of have a babysitter sitting on the side. So it's not that much uh, that you have to set up, in my opinion. You just kind of have to stay on top of your finances, you saving money, your maintenance and your fueling and general stuff like that. But definitely, if you had your own equipment, it would be a lot more responsibility. So... Uh, what man how did wow so you only <laughs> so you only did it for like for like six months and you just figured out that it wasn't it, it wasn't for you i mean i wouldn't mind doing it again if it was a good opportunity i just need to you know make that quick amount of money but like i said it's the company is your babysitter so it really kind of depends on the company more it's not a lot that falls into your hands because you have those constrictions so my main goal right now is to have my own equipment in my name, which is easily attainable at this time. But I, I want to wait to make sure that I'm, you know, I'm not paying a ridiculous amount for insurance and things such as that. So there's certain certain uh, checkpoints you have to reach when it comes to time to be able to get your own equipment and not be paying ridiculous amounts of money on insurance and things like that. All right. That's what's up. So black girl rave, you, you do have a, you, you do have a YouTube channel and, and Instagram, which, which is both fire by the way. <laughs> Thank yeah. you. <laughs> I gotta admit, but before we, but before we touch on that, you being, a, you being, a, a, you know, being attractive uh, young lady out here, you're 22 years old, you're attractive. You got the, you got the bang and the pow going on. <laughs> When you, you know, when you step out of the, when you step out of the truck, do, do you have any, any type of, any type of disrespect towards you? Uh, have you ever experienced any, any, any truck drivers that are trying to holler at you or be disrespectful to you? I mean, uh, almost every other day, <laughs> but you kind of, you kind of get used to it and you kind of know how to, you know, get people to kind of leave you alone, give your space. Thank you. I appreciate it. But, you know. Don't, you know, and disrespect, I don't take, unless somebody's like hollering like, oh, you find B-I-T-C-A to the type, so I don't really take it as disrespect because I also understand a lot of these men, they're out here like me. We are lonely out here working and they see me, I'm like a pig with wings, you know, and they don't know, always know how to come at me correctly. But I don't, I don't take a lot as disrespect. I'm pretty open to, to things. It's more just, you know, men trying to talk and get my number and stuff like that. And you just kind of learn how to know, thank you and decline, decline. But I don't, I don't have men coming at me like crazy, 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 crazy at all. And like I said, like any other female trucker would tell you, we kind of stay out the way. (laughs) I'm not just out here standing in the middle of the truck stop. Like, (laughs) you know, (laughs) I kind of get in truck, go do what I can do, get back, whatever. I'm not just walking around open to receive all that kind of energy. Now, as far as, Let's see. Let's see. Let's see if I can uh bring it up this time. Uh let's see right here. 
Uh, we're gonna bring it up right there. There we go. That's your that's your YouTube channel right here. That's me. Uh, again, like I said, you know, you're an attractive you you're an attractive young lady, and from you know from what I have seen from your videos and everything, you you uh you know you do a lot of you do a lot of reviews you do a lot of you know you talk about you know things and trucking and and so forth and so on but what do you want people to get out of your your channel absolutely so like i was saying earlier just that inspiration just a smile on their face just some entertainment for other truck drivers just the really um a lot of my videos when i'm giving like good tips and stuff it's to help people, it's to inspire them and all of that good stuff. But if somebody just watches my videos just because it puts a smile on their face, that's fine too, you know? Now, what do you say now? There's there's a, a, a growing trend of, of you lady truckers out here, especially, you know, YouTube uh, trucker ladies is coming out here. But there's, uh, there's a growing trend of that, but there's also some backlash that comes with it. Uh, what do you say? What do you say to guys that just think that you guys is doing YouTube just for views? Y'all using y'all bodies to show, you know, to try to get views and likes and stuff like that. I don't. I don't say anything because I don't give my energy to things I don't want to grow. You're gonna have haters whether you're doing something great or bad or whatever. You're gonna have people that have something negative to say and whatever I, I really don't give my energy to people that have negative things to take but to specifically address it men gonna have their opinion and i know it's also based around a lot of kind of envy because you know i'm a woman in a, a male dominated career so obviously i can progress in something as youtube much faster than the man can so that envy comes in there as well and people just don't oh. listen or whatever huh? <laughs> you don't give your attention to it. People say things all the time. And I'm like, you know, people are going to have their opinion. They're going to feel some type of way. And you just let them sit in their negativity and you continue to bring your positivity to everybody else that does care in that positive way. Now, you now, of course, you you only been in the game for two years. You you did a little bit of uh, your May trucking was your first uh, first go at. I mean, go around. Then you just mentioned uh, what was the other trucking company? J. Oh, no. Yeah, I've dipped around a, a lot. Like I said, I'm not that person afraid of change. Okay, if so I what, feel like being treated right, bye. <laughs> so what? So tell me about tell me about a a particular company that that you didn't like, uh, other than the one that you already mentioned about the home time situation. But out of all the companies that you that you was with, which ones that you liked and which ones that you didn't like on a scale of one to ten? Okay, so. I would say JCG, bottom of the list. Uh, I also work for a Russian company or a foreign, excuse me, a foreign company. Let me be more specific. I don't want to buy it that way. A foreign company, excuse me, Black out of Chicago. <laughs> Black Ops. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> out of Chicago. Yeah. Not a, not bottom a of the list, too. And towards the top of the list, <laughs> I would say um, Total. Total Transportation was pretty good to me. They had their issues like any other trucking company that drove me crazy but when it comes to treating you with respect they were definitely at the top and then um the company i'm with now which i don't mind saying jomas logistics best company i've ever been with ever and it's also because i know the owner personally so it's it's more we, we're very respectful and professional but it's also on a more friendlier level as well so i love having that aspect all right. So before you got into the trucking, man, who, who are the three people that 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 pretty much helped you along the way uh, from getting into trucking up until now? Me, myself, and I. <laughs> 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 not to be not to be cocky, but most of the things you know, outside of obviously my parents were always supportive of everything that I do and raising me and all of that. But when it comes to getting on my feet and financially, like. From starting from trucking, I didn't have hand me downs or hand me outs or anything like that. I everything I wanted, I got myself. I, I I got it. I looked, I researched, I studied, and all of that mostly. But when it comes to like a support system, my family, my sisters are the most amazing people in my life. I have an older sister and I have a younger sister. They are my bestest friends. They are literally the loves of my life. And if I want to go 
be in the circus show. They support me. So That's <laughs> definitely my sisters and my family and all that. Well, there, what, 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 how has, how has Chuck and change your way of thinking about it? Uh, about what specifically? Like, you know, before you got into trucking, I'm sure you had like thoughts of how truck, how the trucking industry ran. But now that you're in trucking, you know, now that you're doing it and especially being a young, attractive black female doing, uh, doing trucking, how, how has all this changed your thinking of it? Okay. Absolutely. I love that question so much. So before trucking, I was just another four wheeler that was like, ah, these big trucks on the road in a way that don't do anything important. <laughs> that was my thinking. I didn't really give too much attention to it. I didn't really realize how important it is, but now being in it, it is trucking is not just a job. It's not just a career, especially if you're over the road. It's a literally a whole lifestyle it changes every single aspect of your life so obviously more appreciation for myself and for other truck drivers then when you see the behind the scene logistics of how they move freight and how they move goods around the country that gives you a different perspective on that and just in general just a i mean <laughs> Just now I see trucking so differently because I'm in I'm in the driver's seat. I'm driving. I get I've seen the you know the driving perspective. I've seen the behind the scenes perspective. And I just feel like I have more knowledge on how freight moves around the country. I have more knowledge on the real struggles of truck drivers. I have more knowledge on how vital trucking is for the whole world. For the whole world. So that's kind of like the difference. What would you what what with all that said, what would you change about it? Oh, I would change. Okay, so trucking has a high turnover rate for the main reasons of the difficulty, the stress of the job, and then the basically truck drivers not treated for the worth that they actually are. So definitely would be changing something on those main things that give us such a high turnover rate in the industry. It needs to be way more actual appreciation for truckers, not just, hey, we appreciate y'all. Thanks. Okay, bye. You know, like actual appreciation for truck drivers. And then one other thing would be, and me and other truck drivers, we talk about this all the time, something where people who drive normal cars and four wheelers have to have an education on truck drivers why we're on the road, why we're in the way, <laughs> why we're struggling, all of that, how to drive around us, why we have these certain issues. So people who like, like how I was before, who don't know, if you get in front of a truck and you stop, that's not a good situation because we can't stop. We have 80,000 pounds gross in here. We're not stopping like you, you know, don't ride in our blind spots, things such as that. And then what we're doing, like literally a lot of these people wouldn't have anything. They wouldn't have the clothes on their back. They wouldn't have the car that they're driving they wouldn't have the food on the table if so, truck didn't take it there okay <laughs> just so, stuff like that more education more awareness and something where people have to learn you know so cliche right now <laughs> so cliche we would not have we would not have it if it wasn't for truck driving no but you have to think about it realistically though honestly we do have trains and airplanes, but the train and the airplane can get the goods directly to the store. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And we're also doing the long haul distances. Think about this, Amazon, something as simple as Amazon. Amazon moves everything through trucks, okay? Everything on trucks, things such as that. Hospitals, a lot of hospitals get their goods and the stuff that they need to take care of their people from a truck. So literally, a truck stop driving, everybody stop driving right now. It would be, you, you think COVID pandemic is bad? It would be a real crazy, like, apocalypse. It would be bad. So just yeah. a consideration. <laughs> That's what's up, man. So you, since you've been out here for two years and you're a young, you, you're a young driver, do, do you have your, do you have your manual? Uh, do you have your, your, you don't have no restrictions on your license, do you? No. So you, I, I'm in, a, I'm in an automatic, but I don't have the restriction. Oh, okay. So you, so you definitely, uh, you def when you went to school, uh, I, I I know I don't think I asked this, but when you went to school, did that come out of the pocket? That that came out of your pocket, right? Or did you have like a grant or something like that? So basically how it was, if you stayed with the company that they had the contract with, then the company would eventually pay it off for you after you stayed with them. But, yeah, but I did not want to go with that company. So basically it came out. It ended up coming out of my pocket. Out yes. of your pocket. 
Mm-hmm. All right. What are some of the myths that that you think people that that you think people think about uh, trucking? What what's some of the myths that you that that you heard or that you think of? Um, number one, truckers are big, old, stanky, <laughs> dirty, <laughs> all that, all that. He hum hum drum, which obviously I'm knocking that myth out the water. Um, truck drivers are never home. You have local drivers, you have drivers that go home every week, especially a lot of owner operators have figured out the game when it comes to dispatching and they go home every weekend. Um, What's another one? Um, I can't think of another one, but basically those two is just the most general ones. (laughs) Most general one. Mm -hmm. Look at here, Black Girl Rave. Thank you very much for coming on. Oh, thanks for having me. (laughs) Not a problem, not a problem. Um, again, you, as we start off the episode, you, you are a big proponent of, uh, of black business. So is there any particular black businesses that you want to shout out? Oh gosh, so many. Okay. <laughs> Number one, 18 Willen, obviously, because we all have that connection. 18 Willen has products, um, clothing and hats, and I mean, amazing quality, amazing brand logo for truck drivers off-duty 18 willing brand all that so 18 willing number mm-hmm. one definitely go check him out and check out his mm-hmm. interview with lockout man and good it feels, good information and it feels and it feels and it looks good on you too i'm just saying it feels so good looks good and your interview with him was amazing i sat there and watched it and i was like okay he gave mm-hmm. us some game he's also just a great person in general uh oh god there's so many um over overflow which is a uh it's a black woman and she does basically holistic wellness for women and i know it can really help with a lot of women out here on the road that need some sanity oh my goodness <laughs> so many um let me think 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 what is it called i got this bag from this company and i can't remember but i'll send it to you and you can shout it out somewhere but if anybody just goes to my page and you can kind of see a little bits here and there of all the stuff that i get One more time. <laughs> Tattoos. Oh yes! Thank you, thank you, thank you. I can't believe she. Oh man, I can't believe I almost forgot her. <laughs> My beautiful, beautiful, amazing tattoo artist. She has the first black-owned female tattoo shop in Dallas. I love her so much. She's an amazing person right here. <laughs> she did this for me, and I have so many more tattoos coming for her. You guys definitely need to check her out she is amazing at what she does every tattoo artist in the shop is a black owned a black female and definitely check her out but she's doll house artist on instagram dolls mm-hmm. house of ink excuse me dolls house of ink on instagram dolls, <laughs> house of ink. that's what's up <laughs> when you when now now you you did a video on your first tattoo how how was the experience how was the pain level on that when you were um, and why and why did you and and why did you decide to get a tattoo now now you want more so uh, yeah <laughs> absolutely so um i actually have a specific reason for why i want more which i'll get into in a second but i have a, a necessarily high tolerance for pain so i don't ever like to tell people how my pain level because i'll be like oh it's fine and then they come and like <laughs> it was horrible like you see i have a lot of piercings and stuff Mm-hmm. Pain doesn't really get to me that much. It was more like once you got closer to my breast, it was like, Ugh, but I wasn't in there shaking and crying and anything like that. For me, I'll say like a five out of 10. Um, and then I'm so sorry. People have this truck stop acting ridiculous. <laughs> <laughs> I, I know the feeling, trust me. <laughs> Absolutely. And then um, what were the other questions? I'm sorry. Uh, no, you was you was talking about your, you know, about the t- uh, about your tattoos and the pain level and everything. And you said something about you have uh, you you want to get more. And there was a story behind it. So what was what's the story? Absolutely. So I have yeah. some um, scars from injuries that I've had previously. And I want to instead of just, you know, kind of being negative to myself about the scars, I want to make them into something beautiful. And I already trust her you know, with that and getting the tattoos done the way I like and basically putting my personality in the tattoos. So that's what I'm going back for next, which I'll definitely do a video on that as well. 
Okay, okay. And you do have piercings and stuff like that. Okay. What was uh what was what was the what was the thing about piercings like? I don't know. From, from, from the ears. It's kind of like tattoos. Once you start, you don't stop. <laughs> <laughs> but I've had what you can see, I've had way more, way more. I'll try a piercing, see if I like it. No, I don't like it. I'll take it out. <laughs> and piercings are tattoos. Like I said, you can just take it out if you don't like it. So I just kind of you know, live life on the edge. <laughs> That's what's up. That's what's up. Black girl rave. Where where do you see your where 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 do you see yourself in five years? And you know, I mean, you're you're 22. You 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 definitely you know you you definitely got the mindset of how you want uh, things to go. Um, take you know take you know take the five years. What what do you what do you what do you want out of it? I want to be on a yacht doing my nails out this country. <laughs> Somewhere out exploring, enjoying life and have self-sustaining businesses to where I don't have to physically be here. But my main goal is to get out of America and explore other cultures and other, you know, ethnicities and just get out in nature and really disconnect from all of the technology and everything that's so harped here and just really get out in nature and explore and appreciate, you know, what God has given us. We have a whole planet, you know, a whole planet, you know, let's go out and explore and let's not be too. And I've seen everything here. I've been to almost every state. So just trying right. to get out. But basically I just kind of want to have myself set up for success. And in the event that I do start a family, they're already set up as well, you know? All right, that's what's up. I I, I see your background. What, what what they got you? What they got you in? Oh, this is a twenty twenty one Freightliner. Twenty twenty one. I know. <laughs> with all the bells over here. <laughs> with all the, with all the bells and whistles. Yeah, all the bells and whistles. I mean, you know, there's not much they can really change every year that they come out with a new Freightliner. So it just has some basic new upgrades in the older versions. But it's just it's just newer, really fresher, cleaner, newer. That's what's up. That's what's up. Black, hold on, right quick. Uh, okay. I probably might have to. I probably might have to do. Okay, probably might have to do it that way. Black girl rave, everybody. That is what's up. I appreciate you coming on. I appreciate you. Uh, you know, doing the damn thing with me. You are a citizen now, so. If you ever decide to come back on and chop it up with me, you can always do that. Uh, shout out, you know, if you have any, uh, if you have any links uh, or social media links that you want to shout out, would you, go ahead and uh, shout them out. Black or rave. If you search black or rave, you'll eventually find me on everything. <laughs> That's, That's like my little name. <laughs> That's what's up. That's what's up. Black girl rave, everybody. Well, that's going to do it for the Lockout Men podcast show for today. Got another one coming. Just hang tight. It will be there. <laughs> That's what's <laughs> up. Thank you, everybody, for being here. I really do appreciate you guys showing up. If you like content like this and more, don't forget to like, subscribe, comment, share, hit that bell and that all button. Make sure you like the video so that the algorithm could pick it up and it will be out in the atmosphere. That's what's going on. I appreciate Black Girl Rave coming on, chopping it up with me. I really do. Awesome, uh, awesome young lady. Make sure you guys go check her out on her YouTube page, which is uh, Brave Trucking. Brave <laughs> Trucking. And mm -hmm. you can also see her on her Instagram as well. You know, beautiful black young lady doing her thing. So I wish you much success in uh in in your in your trucking career, Black Girl Ray. Thank you so much. Thank you for having me. Everybody else, y'all take it easy, and we are gone. Get it in, yeah. Party over here, get it in, yeah. She like a liquor clear, get it in, yeah. She get it from a deal, get it in, yeah. Make it disappear, get it in, yeah. Park it in the rear, get it in, yeah. Now make it real clear, get it in, yeah. Freak it with no fear, get it in, yeah. Pop, pop, pop it in the clutch, girl, get it in, yeah. Jump on the double touch, girl, get it in, yeah. Drop, drop, drop it double clutch, girl, get it in, yeah. Pump it up, butt lift, now downshift.